Chapter 959 Samurai Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D Cast. I am the best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. I'm gonna give you my opinion and I'm gonna take your money. That sounds great, and you can make that exchange official by going to patreon.com slash thepodcastpirates. Highly recommend it for the premiere crew joining experience. All right, we got a chapter here, uh, chapter 5, no, 959, but first, the cover page. Let's check out on Gang Beige and the whole fam. They um, seem to be in Dress Rosa. They're, looking at they're in Dress Rosa. Last time they were at Dress Rosa, and now they're in Dress There's mm-hmm. nothing really happening here. I guess this is implying that Lola is probably here, or at least they suspect Lola is still here, well, so they're going to check. Well, yeah, I mean, the guy last time said, oh, yeah, she's, we just saw her. Like they... Well, the way he phrased it, he's, I, I checked, it said, like, she was here a few days ago. I wasn't sure if that was implying she was here a few days ago, then left, or was saying, I saw her here a few days ago, so she's very likely still here, or conceivably could have moved, and it seems to be the latter, so. Okay, great. They're looking around. We shall see. But the scars. Dress looking pretty fucked up. The birdcage scars Rest on peace. the ground. Yep. And, oh, oh, yeah, that is the fucking birdcage scars. Jesus Christ, smooth that shit over, guys. Yeah, Ooh, how many days has it been? dark. You put some sand in there, in the cracks? <laughs> yeah, they'll get to it. They're working on it, I guess. Fucking flower hill. All right, whatever. I'm having negative flashbacks to Dress Rosa. Um, let's move on past that. Good luck on your quest, Capone and family. Uh, chapter 959, Samurai. Let's see what Oda has in store for us. Okay, so, so here we go. Flashback, baby. Yes. Two days. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're reiterating things we knew last time. The forces are... But when we last left our heroes, they were traumatized. It seemed no one had showed up. The seven samurai and two hanger on are feeling very, very low. So let's, let's yep. learn why. Uh, 420... 4,200, so that's like... That's 420 mm. times 10. That's a pretty good number. Nice. Nice. Um, <laughs> that's how many s- units they have. Everyone's going well. We're going to meet at mm-hmm. the promised port. And uh, this is this is what they were doing just as as that uh, announcement has been made on the smail. Yep. Uh, everybody's ready. In Port Itachi, where they were building the old uh, ships, they got them all. Mm-hmm. And they're going to put them in position... In Port uh, Tokage, I think, which is where they were yeah, yeah. destroyed, or maybe they were. Just, I I'm, I'm, I'm a little well, that, confused. That's they're supposed to meet. Uh, the names don't matter. They're not at the port they're supposed to be right now. They're getting them ready to move them there, but yeah. they don't yet, so they don't draw attention. They, they don't and do it so, yet. Yeah, they're. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Straw Hats are going to go to Amigasa Village where the Sunny Go is. They're saying mm-hmm. goodbye. Everybody's getting ready. They've got the weapons in Ringo. Um, they got the prisoners in the prison in Udon, but then Mm -hmm. they're all talking as one, as Mm -hmm. one entity, uh, about how they should approach this. And they decide not to assemble too early because as soon as, you know, the flower festival starts, nobody will be paying Mm -hmm. attention and they can move pretty silently. So they're going to wait until the last minute to get everyone into the, into, into, uh, into a position, as it were. So th- this explains why they didn't gather there ahead of time. So it's being addressed, at least. So, okay, makes sense. Uh, by the way, we see the prisoners. We, I think we were talking about this before. They're saying, like, hey, we got lots of weapons that were going to be exported from, uh, you know, the, the, the weapons factories are here, run by Queen and the gang. Uh, we've got a, a seemingly cannons and other things, so hopefully those will be used to some effect as well during the battle. And, uh, you know, those other people up in the snowy place from Ringo are going to bring down the samurai swords and whatnot, and they're making armor, so... Okay, yeah. cool. These things have been it's all, addressed. It's all Checking fucking off the box. sick. I like, mm-hmm. I like seeing all of these characters that I don't know who, who their names are anymore, I, but they're, they're mm-hmm. cool. Uh, especially and, and these the way, minks. I like this yeah. monkey mink and this, like, fat cat mink. With the with the long <laughs> uh, black hair, an Ooh, action and action giraffe um, in the back. Oh, there he is, looking very depressed. I mean, just laid low by his poor AIDS infestation. One day, maybe he could eat a devil fruit. That's like the AIDS AIDS fruit, and he'll develop an immunity. Or maybe that's what gave him the virus in the first place. I mean, who can say? Uh, by the way, in this shot, I think we see the reindeer girl. I forget her name right now, but that is Chopper's future wife. 
is guaranteed 100% this reindeer mink, uh, the only sexually available creature in all of One Piece <laughs> for Chopper in his particular sexual fucked up rate. Uh, so I, I, her name was like Sugar. She was like the the idol of the minks. I forget what her fucking name was, but uh, it's her. Someone, someone say down below. I could Google it, but fuck it. Um, so there you go. Oh, by the way, one other point. I just the the, the whole concept of like the secret note made by um, uh, you know the the Odin boys by the cozy. I, maybe Kinemon literally made it up. I, I think he did, but I don't know. I, I noticed that we've got one of the Yakuza guys saying, like, the pair of birds indicate that we will assemble before sunset. Okay, so, like, we... I, I don't know about all you people listening. I am a, you know, semi... Not professional, but, like, I have studied Japanese for years, so I have something of a, of a vested interest in the language, and I'm wondering if this is, like, a pun. Like, why would a pair of birds indicate something pre-sunset? Because birds are out... During the day, I mean, didn't I don't know? Is this like a kanji joke I feel like, or like a grammar thing? Didn't, didn't I they know. go over this? Like when he explained what it means, like this. And you that. know, they may have. I may be forgetting. Like I don't, they explained I don't think a pun was involved. Like, I think it was just sort of a Kirimon saying, "This means this, and this means that." So that's how. But people... it, I mean, it's a code. The people would have to decode it because they aren't given the explanation. They're just given the image. Uh, so there must be an intrinsic meaning in the, you know, in these symbols. Like Look. how the, 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 it was originally like a snake at the bottom, but they changed it to a lizard, meaning to meet at Port Tokage, as opposed to, I don't know, Hebi, Port, port or whatever, which means port snake. Port snake, snack. Well, in any case, I, if I'm wrong, let me know, people. I'll go look it up again. But in any case, um, everyone's gathering, and Amigasa Village, we got the Straw Hats. Yeah. What are they up to, Gib? <laughs> the, uh, the, the Straw Hats are getting some, some of that sweet samurai armor with the, with the, with the big horns and the stuff. Luffy, Brook, and Chopper all looking, looking like, uh, looking like kings right now. Like absolute, absolute beasts. Now, now, by the way, so this is incredible. Everyone, I mean, if you haven't read the chapter, go do so. Our boys are looking fab as heck. But Gib, I need to share some information with you and the rest of our viewers who may not have picked up on this. Now, this was pointed out to me by um, some folks in the uh, podcast. Discord, the Pod Discord, link down below. Feel free to join for great conversation and actually get very useful information from there. So it's a very, very good place for me. Okay, so take a look at uh, this picture. Where'd I put it? Okay, well, whatever. Just, just take a look at this right here. It's uploading now, and everybody will put a link in the description or something to this. This is, um, you will see an image from chapter. Oh, where is it? I think it was chapter three hundred and. Uh, 10, 310 during Skypea, you will see that Luffy is wearing a samurai outfit, and you know, Usopp and Robin are there, and it's very Asian looking. Here, let, let me link you like a higher resolution so you can look at it by itself. Yeah, I'd like to see um, the, of, the, of the, interest, the full version of that. I've got it right there. It's uploading right now. Give it a sec. Um, but if you look carefully, this is actually, it's not exactly the same, but this outfit is like 95 to like 90 to 95% identical to the exact samurai outfit that Luffy was wearing like what four, five, six hundred chapters ago uh, when Oda drew this initial design of Luffy. And if, if you look really carefully, look at the details on, for example, the pants. You can see the swirls and even the crane symbol are exactly the same from, I mean, what chapter is this? 959 to chapter 310, that is 649 chapters ago. 649 chapters he made this outfit, and now it's been canonized in the yeah. story. That's, and again, I mean, that's not pretty exactly cool. the same. I mean, well, I, okay, so th some this people, isn't the same as yeah, like go, something, go some lore. It's, uh, he probably looked back at this like, didn't I draw Luffy in a thing? And he looks at the design and says, mm -hmm. yeah, I should use that again. And then he drew it again. Well, see, G Gib, I, I couldn't agree more, but there's slightly more to the story. Which is that, um, uh, I mean, th th this is the main thing of interest. He, I'm sure Oda, like, looked back at this. A, a lot of people are being like, oh my god, what a genius. He planned this, like, from back then. I mean, probably not, guys. He probably just was like, ah, I already drew Luffy in armor. Let's do a reference to that. And it's awesome, and it's great. So there you go. I'll buy, buy, some details are different. The swords are different. I mean, his, his left but, leg is, uh, is, like, raised in the same way as well. It, it, yeah, it is a similar pose, which is, yeah, definitely of note. I mean, it doesn't have the helmet and that. Whatever. You can look at the pictures and see for yourself. Okay, but look, for example, at the uh, the pants and the crane logo on his pants. The, the crane logo on those pants 
did in fact turn out to be basically exactly the same as the Kozuki clan logo. And now some people might think to themselves like, oh my God, what this proves is that Oda had the entire plan for the Kozuki clan planned out when he drew this a million years ago. Okay, more likely is that Oda like drew this samurai design years and years ago. Maybe he had a plan for the Kozuki clan to be like, have a crane symbol or not. Um, maybe not. But more likely, when he got to this point in the story, because he, he probably thought he would do a Wano place eventually if he got there, he decided to himself, like, let's use this design I already came up with, like this family crest, and we'll make that the logo of the Kozuki clan. And just to add slightly mm -hmm. more context there, I was doing a little bit of research. Um, so the Kozuki clan, their, uh, their name, you know, it's pronounced uh, Kozuki K, means Kozuki clan, and it's written with the kanji for light and then moon, and then, like, K, as it like the clan kanji. So, so first of all, this answers the question I've kind of been wondering about as to why the people who are allied with the Kozuki clan have little moon tattoos on their ankles. It's because their name like means moonlight, basically, is the is the the deal behind their name. The the thing about the crane though, I haven't found any connection between like their name or their history really and cranes. So that one seems a little bit arbitrary. So like. I just want to be clear. You guys know me. I love One Piece. But I hate when people give too much credit to something that's cool. But this isn't like a genius level 1000 IQ play where all these factors had to be exactly as they are and proves that he had all this planned out from the start. It's just a really cool recycled idea, most likely. And, you know, he deserves all the kudos in the world for being cool, doing this, doing a reference. But also, on the other hand, he just copied a design from the past. So is it that impressive? I mean, you know, you can decide for yourself. But uh, there you go. There's the full backstory on this outfit for Luffy. Kozuki clan symbol and whatnot. And uh, there you go. That's, that's what I got. <laughs> you know, the thing I like about the, the design mm -hmm. of, of the thing with the crane on it is that it's like the devil fruit swirls as well. That's probably why he drew it initially like that. It's got like... You see mm, that? Could be, could be. Yeah, on the pants, I, I see it, I see it. Not uh, not a crazy idea. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Wonder Who if... can say? If a... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dragon in the back looks... I'm, I'm just looking at, like... Oh, thing... I'm sorry, I almost forgot. The other important thing about this is that, how interesting, in the back of this cover art, there is a giant pink Japanese dragon. Hmm, who do I know in the story who is a pink Japanese dragon? Literally Momonosuke. So I'm starting to see some connections here between, you know, oh, yeah. the Kozuki I mean, clan, Momonosuke. This yeah. is this is definitely like like he, he like I could imagine writing one piece. He definitely wanted Wano to be a major mm -hmm. thing. Uh Very likely. everything relating to Wano probably had elements of it in like in the original mm -hmm. plan of One Piece. So, like, the idea that there's going to be a dragon, uh, mm -hmm. pretty pretty easy. Who doesn't want to put a dragon in their manga yeah. somewhere, you know? <laughs> um, the color is probably just just a random choice here. And then he decided... I bet that he'd made this cover art and then thought to himself later, like, ooh, let's recycle some of these elements, because I like the idea of a pink dragon. And so he invented Momonosuke and made what, him pink. Because Momo means pink in, in Japanese, in, uh, by the way. In Bakuman, yeah. where they say, like... A retroactive um, setup or something, retroactive something or other. Where, like, I mean, there's retcon, of course, but no, no. The, in Bakuman, uh, they, they they talk about mm -hmm. this literary technique of like taking stuff you've drawn for no reason and then making it important later. Yes, yes. I, I, you know, I can't remember the term, but I know what you're talking about. And I mean, Oda is the best at like that because One Piece is so long and there's so much to draw from. I mean, so, especially uh, with, that with definitely like, feels the like the, this. the color spreads where he has. He has. Yeah, yeah. He can do whatever he wants, and they're so mm -hmm. cool and they're so beautiful. Uh, this just sort of—it's great. I, I mean, I'm—I'm I'm not like mm -hmm. trying to downplay the fact that there's there's you know a recycled thing that it's like oh my god it's like a callback. Uh, it is cool. It's, <laughs> it's just that I feel that there's there's plenty of room in the market. Uh, the, the market is saturated on, oh my god, One Piece is so, like, everything that is happening, every chapter is amazing, brilliant. That market is saturated. I feel there's plenty of room for us to be like, this, this, and this are perhaps the most reasonable explanations, and let's give appropriate credit for, you know, the things that have been done. Not disproportionate, excessive credit when it isn't probably what happened. Uh, that That's where I like yeah, yeah. to exist anyway. Hype, so, hype yeah, is... Yeah 
is a bit like juvenile to to, to be hype all the time you know take take a chill pill children settle you just want you want to save your now. hype for when it is appropriate and really matters that's that's what i feel like yeah. and you know that's kind of what my whole speech the other day was about so eh, whatever i will now take a sip of calming tea i will sip my coffee as well that was a really weird gross sip please cut that <laughs> you're editing this one do as you like speaking of cutting by the way um oh, we've yeah. got sanji here talking us to, to zoro juro let's see what they have to say oh yeah sanji is saying hey you're gonna wear that that cool armor the japanese stuff and he's like zoro's like no i just slow me down Ugh. Fucking beta so, ass Zolo Juro, not putting on sick ass armor like everybody else. What a bitch. What an idiot. He's he, he's not even a real samurai. I'm more Japanese than you are, Zoro. I have the soul of a true warrior in me. You're just some fucking pretender. Fucking Marimo. The, you know, just just as a, as an aside, draw, drawing <laughs> yeah. all that samurai armor. Like I've wanted to draw like a, a comic for a mm-hmm. while with a samurai character in it, and I was always debating. Do mm-hmm. I want to have one of these sorts of armors on the character? Because mm. that's a lot of lines to Complex. draw. Complex. Yeah. That doesn't l- lend itself well to, to drawings. Maybe you could simplify it. I mean, for example, well, like, this the is thing. like all these that, little that's lines. That's the thing. That but, some, some of the, yeah. if not all of the charm of this, of this mm-hmm. sort of armor is how like busy it is. And how like garish and bombastic <laughs> and like, ha... I am so cool. Look at me, the samurai, and I have all this stuff on. It's just sort of like, you know, I I appreciate him drawing yeah. this this pose with these three. It's so cool, but I but I think Zoro, being the one who's actually going to be fighting sword battles, doesn't want to have him to have to draw him drawing like in in that sort ah, of armor. Ah, you're right. <laughs> The only one who it really... I mean, okay, Brooke is a swordsman, but Brooke, you know, yes. different kind of but, swordsman. But, like, Zora's definitely going to have, like, more screen presence yeah. in battle. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, God. Luffy looks so fuck. I love in that top pan. Luffy looks so cool with his helmet on. And, you know, I, yeah, we didn't appreciate it, but I fucking love how excited Luffy and the little baby Chopper and Big Brooke. What a, what a great pose of all these cool dudes with Chopper, the ladies Chopper cheering him on from behind. so good right now. He's looking like... He I looks think, incredible. I think it's mostly because <laughs> that giant hat of his is gone. Absolutely. Although, oh, wait, where are his antlers? Are those his antlers? I think those through? are his... Oh, no, wait, he's got fake antlers no. on the front, and then you can see a tiny of his real antlers on the side there. Near, oh, you're right. Near okay, one of the okay. sparkles. <laughs> Multiple antlers. <laughs> you can never have too many. I hope his antlers came from an actual reindeer that was slaughtered to make this sick hat for Well, they're supposed Chopper to be like to insects, right? Like beetles? Stag well, beetles? I mean, they're styled after insects, but uh, I don't think they're literally made from insects. Not, not literally. Maybe they're not made from animals at all, though? I, I don't know. I, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> anyway. Could be wrong. Uh, Sanji here is mm-hmm. uh, saying you should wear it because your bounty's lower than mine and you're a bitch. <laughs> and Zoro, <laughs> true. No, Zoro, knowing this to be true, gets mad. It is true. <laughs> knowing that he is a bitch uh, has to fight back to maintain his pathetic manhood. But Sanji, Sanji Chads unite with his infinitely superior observation hockey effortlessly dodges the bumbling fool Zoro Juro's fucking idiot slash can't even control his own sword, cuts off Another piece from the edge of the island. Gotta say, loving the the com- the comedic flashback to the first slash. Like the first time, it was like serious. This time, it's just hilarious. <laughs> just like, just and casually cra- I love it. doing it. Love it. Who knows how many <laughs> making animals something he impressive. Yeah, making something that was intimidating and impressive now excessive and ridiculous. Uh, that's comedy, folks. Yes. That that's comedy. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. <laughs> All right. Uh, then we get a bit of info about weathery stuff. Uh, so yep. Onigashima is always in the winter, as in like well, the, only the, the they say the entrance. I don't know if the whole island is that way, but I mean, Robin here says its entrance is winter. Maybe the main part is a different season. Onigashima I, I, I don't know. looks really small, but maybe it's a bigger island that once you're there, it's like oh, it's big. Maybe the, there's space. Maybe like, there's space for the entrance to have a different weather pattern to the main thing. Could be. Or maybe it's still small, but, like, is just specifically fucked up and is, like, has many seasons crammed in a small location. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean, see. we were talking they about seem to be how, leading like, to something Kaido with it. having, like, weather yeah. powers as a dragon was, like, potentially the reason. So, like, oh, yeah. that would be a way to That's dissuade true. people from fucking 
annoying him is mm. that it's winter at the entrance to, to make you the know, ships even if, uh, hard to land mm-hmm, there or something. Mm-hmm. Even if, like, um, yeah, because we all know that, like, or, or like, mytho- mythologically speaking in Japan, dragons are li- linked to weather control and stuff. Like, even if Kaido, his devil fruit doesn't actually necessarily give him weather control, to, it's very Oda-esque to, like, make the environment... Like, and to prepare the stage of this, you know, of this particular part of One Piece and to make Onigashima maybe like, maybe like a very weather, chaotic, and centrally place that would, like, lend to his advantage to control. So it's not like he literally controls the weather, but, like, Oda writing the story is kind of playing into that in the themes and is, like, alluding to this mythological construct or something. So, I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Could be cool, yeah, but Also we'll could see. be the, the case. Um, kind of like with, I mean, I mean, ever like I love when Oda fucking does this. Like uh, Crocodile with his control of the sandstorms and Alabasta, like ten out of ten writing, absolutely brilliant. Anaru, of course, everything with his mantra powers and the electric god beams from Skypea. I mean, like the best thing in the whole series, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's really like so, the the shortcut to making a character like overwhelmingly, based. <laughs> uh, overwhelmingly based. Is is, <laughs> is is having is having the, is having the, the the control over nature, which is like the most powerful force that is m- the most yeah, relatable yeah. to humans. Is like oh a tornado, like you can't fucking do anything about a tornado. You just have to bunker down. Mm-hmm. If somebody can control I, I, tornadoes, then it's like oh my god. Epic. I mean that's so true. It's and it's like it's even bigger than yourself, kind of. Because like I mean one of the reasons I roll my eyes at at like Do, Do Flamingo's arc is because like. Like, it just, just a small point, but, like, in Alabasta, for example, I mean, I was blown away by, like, the brilliance of the writing that, like, okay, it's a sand kingdom, you've got Crocodile, he's got the sand devil fruit, okay, kind of convenient, kind of coincidental, but, like, it all plays into the themes, Crocodile oh, chose to be exactly, here knowing these things, so. Yeah, I don't think it's convenient. No, it, it's not really convenient, but, like, like, we can see, like, top down, like, of course, Oda would have the sand guy be here, but, I mean, it's, it's good writing, it's not bad, but, like, uh, it's the way that he plays into, like, the environment that he sets up, where specifically, where, like, we meet uh, the old man, um, I forget his name, but the old man trying to dig out Yuba, Toto, Toto was his name, and we see this one man struggle against the elements of nature, that gives us the personal hook into the arc. The the weather, that is, like, the main issue, like, boogie powder and crocodile being responsible for fucking it up, that's the issue. But then even more personal is the fact that we see Crocodile, like, he has st- sandstorm powers, he creates sandstorms, and he specifically says, uh, like, Luffy and gang, all I have to do is stand here, I create a sandstorm, like a little one of my own, using my devil fruit power, but then the environment of Alabasta picks it up and takes it, so even I couldn't stop it if I wanted to. So really, it's not me. I'm just starting the dominoes. It's that the environment itself creates this gigantic clusterfuck, and that's what's really burying Yuba. And we, you know, we care about Yuba because we're connected to Toto, and Luffy loves him, and now we're getting a direct connection to our villain, and that's what makes his ultimate defeat so satisfying. That, and it's, it's not just Crocodile, it's the whole environment being used. But, like, but then Doflamingo just literally controlled the whole birdcage physically himself. It was no one else, he's just that strong, and it's like, well, that's a little less cool, that's a little less interesting than... You know, Anaru using his specific powers and his, like, electric powers to do things with, like, his his weird, like, God-given mantra power that he, like, doesn't deserve and he didn't do anything to earn. Um, but, uh, I mean, with, with, with Anaru, his God complex was the entire point. With Crocodile, having the environment be part of it was, like, part of his master plan because that's the kind of guy he is. And then with Doflamingo, he was just, just really strong. Just really, really strong. And uh, it was kind of Enaru again, because he was, like, tied to the Celestial Dragons, kind of like a godlike guy. Ah, whatever. You get, you get my point, people. Yeah. In any case, <laughs> we can move on. Uh, well, one thing about so We were talking that, about... Or, uh, Oni, well, oh, well, sorry, one thing, uh, like, about that, like, Dress Rosa. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. the, the thing, it's, 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 thematically, uh, bleh, it's thematically relevant. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because... Uh, he's like pulling the strings, you know. He's he's behind the scenes. He's the hmm. he's the jokester. He's the trickster. Uh, he's gonna <laughs> say the n word. Puppeteer. Uh, <laughs> he would. Uh, and he and he's and he's and he's you know, it his power to control the the downfall of a kingdom from behind the scenes and nobody thinks it's him. Mm-hmm. Perfectly understandable way for that character to have achieved his goals. It's just the scale Absolutely. at which he was able to do that. It's sort of like, if you can do that, why even control them? 
Like you Th- could- this is yeah, this is what I complained about about the guy sometimes. It's that we take all this time to set him up as a backroom dealer. He make he's wheeling and dealing. He's a total puppeteer. Like his devil fruit, literally a puppeteer devil fruit. Uh, and 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 then at the end, oh, it also turns out he's like incredibly physically strong and can puppet like an entire fucking country at once. It's like, well, did we even need the back channel stuff? The whole like, you know, it, it's like two contradictory sides of the guy. Um, not not entirely, not entirely, but at least partially, it feels. It's, it's not contradictory. It's just sort of like op. Like okay, you're both. It, it, it's kind of just like like with law, how we just pile on cool things about it's, law. It's like, like literally if, best devil fruit. He's a D, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like if if, if, if the heavy sad. weapons guy had like a cloak and dagger, you know, and he could yes, run real exactly. as fast as the medic in TF2. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. Mm-hmm. Be an op. Is appropriate sometimes when bu- appropriately built up. Like Kaido's been built up to be OP, um, but Doflamingo, uh, di- different situation, di- different kind of situation. And not everything about Doffy is bad. Don't don't freak out, everybody. There's a lot of good, but not all good. Okay. In any case, so Onigashima's entrance is in winter. Maybe weather will be a thing. We don't know. Time to invade. Um, and we're, yes, we're talking with we, the minks here. We got, we got names of... The, I yeah. don't know whether we knew the names of these three musketeers. You know, or actually, it's three musketeers. Shishilin. I believe we did. Con- Conchalot and Giovanni. Uh, I like now, Giovanni. I, he's funny. He doesn't have he's eyes. He's a funny zebra man. Uh, they're, maybe they're in there somewhere. But I'm, I'm just noticing, by the way, that... So, we've previously <laughs> translated Shishilian as Sicilian... And but but Oda here in no uncertain terms <laughs> spells it out in English lettering Shishilian. Uh so I guess he's a real big shill. He's always pushing his Patreon and everybody. Wait, is, he's got so much paywalled content. Is that a guaranteed oh, like part of the original like that those English letters there? Oh uh, yeah, just so you know, like Oda does a thing these days where he will spell out like in English a lot of the time in English lettering. So I, I think that what's happening, we could check with um, with Manga Stream to be sure. But I think those gray letters in the back are like Oda literally wrote that, and the small text he wrote in like kanji or katakana or, or in Japanese. Okay, and they're, uh, they're doing it over, but uh, in English again. Yeah, th- that's why they do it because like it's supposed to be in Japanese over the over the cover originally speaking. Okay. Um, but yeah, there you go, Oda. Get your get your English teacher back in, and then fire him because he's failing you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so all right. Uh, in any case, <laughs> yeah, they're talking about Sulong potential, so we'll definitely see that if there's a. Oh yeah, it's a fucking it's a full moon the night they're invading. So bam, I guess we were fucking right. It's uh, they they could literally every mink could be a Zulong. Uh, so geez, yeah, sounds uh sounds pretty good. <laughs> I think I think Kaido. Is gonna die though. Oof. I hope so. I, I can't wait to see all our all our boys go buck I mean, wild. Carrot pretty cool. is like Carrot is decently strong, but she's not like yeah. the strongest mink, and she wrecked quite a lot of Big Mom's ships and did a lot of Absolutely. damage. Absolutely. So like, if there's a ho- like a bunch of them, mm-hmm. like I I would assume the Shishilin, these three musketeers are stronger than Carrot because they're like. Very likely, very and likely. Then, and then there's Inurashi himself. It's like, wow, dude, what are they going to do? He was on fucking Gold Rogers' crew, man. Same with, you know, Neko Mamushi and whatnot. So, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're going to tear of, shit up. Speaking of Neko Mamushi, they mention mm. him. So I think he's going to turn up if they mention him. He'll be there, guaranteed. Everyone's going to fucking be there. Also, Luffy mentions Jimbei. Look at that boy. Oh, Jesus, Luffy. First of all, that's a very cool pose, looking out at the sea, looking looking good, Luffy, looking good. But uh, he, you know, he finally says, "I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd said it, but like this whole fucking arc has been Jean Bayless, and uh, despite him joining the crew at the end of last arc, got you know our mixed feelings about that, whatever. But finally, Luffy's like, where the fuck is Jean Bay? Uh, you know, a little flashback to him leaving. He's part of the crew. I mean, they're bringing it up again. They're, lads, I've, I've said my piece. There's no escaping. Jean Bay is part of the crew. It's just a matter of time till he gets here." And uh, this seems like the perfect setup, the perfect avenue for him to join. Like with, like he will like lead the cavalry charge during yeah. the battle when things are at their worst. Jean Bay and everyone will show up, filled with hope. Maybe Jean Bay will have a cool, you know, eye patch or something. Oh my god, so cool! He, he'll um, have a fucking we'll mouth patch if if I have anything to do with it. <laughs> oh shit! Jean um, Bay, you know, he's fine. My my complaint, as always, I, is I think we've got enough crew members. He should just be an ally. But what I definitely think that Jinbei will arrive with Nekomamushi 
and the white beard. I think with like people. Marco too, and like everybody who we doubt. I don't to know whether Marco is going to be up. there because of that one scene where he was like, "I have to stay here, but find the others." Or... I think that was a misdirect, but I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I could be wrong. But yeah, there you go. Gene Bay update. It might, it might even happen like right now. Like if if all of yeah, the plan possible. failed, it's like how oh, do, how are we going right. to get there? And then Jinbei mm-hmm. appears with, uh, you know, his submarine that he has. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Uh, I, Law has a submarine, as a matter of fact. They could use his yellow submarine. You know, that is the thing. I, they don't mention here at all what is Law doing, because we know he's dubiously on the side of, of these guys. Like, is yeah. he or isn't he? Something's Ooh, going on. Something's going on. So Law will have <laughs> a way to get to Onigashima because nobody would find a submarine in order to destroy it probably mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and we see them destroying everything else later but yeah Jinbei, well, Jinbei we'll probably see. is going to appear and that's that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then we get maybe some... Big Mom's crew will finally show up there too because they're still AWOL oh, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know oh big reinforcements you'd, you'd think that uh... True. You'd think that Kaido, now that he's allied with Big Mom, like would have allowed Big Mom's crew in. Although maybe he doesn't trust them. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, well there's an alliance. There's, they've got to come and be friends. You, I mean, you would think so. Uh, I mean, it would be kind of boring to have another big fight against more Big Mom crew, but, you know, other choices are being made that are and are not. I, I think what's going to happen is Big Mom is here. Uh, it was set up. I, I, would, I wouldn't have done it this way myself, but it, nonetheless, it has been done. Luffy is going to face Big Mom first, and he's going to be like, I now have mastered this armament hockey technique, so I'm able to, like, at least deflect and overcome Big Mom temporarily, and then he'll, like, get past her, and that'll prove he's grown up and he's gotten stronger, and then will be the real fight against Kaido after that in some, in some way. Yeah. But I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. God, I still he's got to have a rematch against Big Mom. That's guaranteed. I'm just reminded, like, Katakuri is not with the Big Mom Pirates. We didn't see him. We didn't maybe see him. Maybe still recuperating. On... Maybe. I. Yeah. Well, potentially, but like, I think it would be like super cool if if a Katakuri uh, has severed ties and is like with Jimbe or something, and then Jimbe <laughs> pi- and he literally joins the Straw Hat crew and becomes captain of the Straw Hat Pirates. <laughs> I'm all for it, dude. Immediately, uh, yeah. What's the called? Mutiny. <laughs> And then Jinbei is like, here's my new boyfriend, Luffy. He's like, damn it, Ooh, Jinbei, why yeah. did you come back? I hate you, Jinbei. You've ruined Oof. everything. <laughs> what if uh, Katakuri made the Straw Hat Pirates 2? And because he's like, because he's like better Luffy. And, uh, you know, he just, he, that's just his thing. He's just Luffy, but better. He gets a really big straw hat. Oh, like he breaks into the Celestial Dragon place and he steals Eam's big straw hat and he wears that around from now on. Yeah. Because he's like bigger. And then Jinbei is like, ah, Katakuri, can I join your crew? And Katakuri is like, no. <laughs> and then we start reading no One Piece fish, 2. No fucking We stop, we stop <laughs> doing sounds... the pod D cast. We start doing the pod D, uh, the, the Katakuri cast. It's like the pod D cast, only there's a two instead of the D in the middle, because now two is the pod important two thing cast? instead of D. Pod two cast, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. All right, back to the stuff that's happening. Yes. Um, so, big, big uh, beast pirate headliner, uh, Mr. Man, Hold'em. Hold'em, of course. Hold'em. He's saying, I think, like, this part confused mm. me a little bit, um, but mm. what he's saying is that there has been more stealing of the food from the farms, and he's trying to find out right. where the fucking food has gone. The bandit's hideout was burned to the ground, so... Mm-hmm. Why would they just so steal food it? instead of coming for revenge? And, yeah, I'm, I'm and of course, we, we know people. that our boys have been stealing from these guys in preparation for the raid, but Hold'em and his lads still don't know that. And it's, it's interesting to note that the um, seemingly, the villagers seem to have gotten some money and maybe some food or something, and they're saying the Witching Hour boy brought us food. We still don't know who or what the Witching Hour boy is, I, I don't think, if it's even real. I or, think um, the Witching Hour boy is the the mm. the ninth samurai we haven't met yet, or it's... Ooh, um, good point. It's a uh, fucking Drake. I, one of those two. Hmm. Because okay. now, we know, good now we know Drake is like a good boy on the inside. He's so a good he's, boy? He mm. could be a doing a good things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Those are those are reasonable guesses. We'll we'll fucking see, I guess. 
But right now, our boy Hold'em is, is torturing or, you know, squeezing, putting the squeeze on a couple of these villagers. Um, yeah. Being like, okay, somebody stole our food. Was it the witching hour boy? Was it you? Who the fuck's doing this? But the villagers are, are saying mum's the word. They're not. Yeah. Uh, they're not if the red scabbards are true, like actually back, then maybe they're responsible yeah. for the missing food. We cannot uh, let these guys know that the red scabbards are back. Um, Indeed. Otsuru Indeed, they're helping out. Jumps into the in, into the fray, saying, "I will show you where the food is." And knowing that if you know if she leads them somewhere and there's nothing there, she's probably gonna die. So she's like, "Oh shit! Probably. I've got to do this for for my boy." I know you're back here, my husbando, uh, mm -hmm, Kinemon. Mm -hmm. So she she's like laying down her life for the cause. It's truly epic. But then, yeah, indeed. Uh, the 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 villagers they yell about there's no need for you to cover for us because we ate all the food and it was a dream come true to eat all of that food, and we don't mind. None <sighs> of us mind dying after that. So there's like, so they should just they're they taking just, the basically for they. It. Yeah, they're just saying, this was us, in effect. So, yeah. um, all right, there you go. And so, we, uh, Holden looks none too pleased. He looks none too pleased. We'll see uh, what comes of that, I guess. But then, uh-oh, night before the final battle, mm -hmm. the bit, these, these funny um, looking, I forget what they're called. Oh, uh, p uh p smile, pleasures. P pleasures. Smile, god something. damn it. Headliners? Are they headliners? No, I no, no, the remember. headliners are the big boys. They're, I'm gonna fucking Google it. Okay, tell what they're doing. I'll Google it while you. Uh, yeah, they're, they're flying around. One of them is a butterfly, which I I like. Um, she looks dope. She looks actually really cool. All, all the girls always look pretty good. I mean, <laughs> that's typical One Piece. And all the guys look like horrible monsters. I don't know that um, eagle. That eagle guy where the guy's face is the bird's neck is pretty cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, pr pretty pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty yeah, so cool. it, he's yeah. So like they found. By the way, the I think they're called gifters. gifters. I believe they're called gifters. The yeah. Um. Yeah. So they have found, uh, due to information they were given, which I, I'm not sure who would have given them this information, but the Straw Hat Pirate cr uh, Crew's yeah, ship, yeah. Sunny Go, found, and then blowed up. Pretty sure it's not blowed up. But pretty sure it's just the cave that is collapsed. Um, I'm, and I'm just they'll saying, have to repair is... it. But you know. <laughs> They... We know that this the uh, okay uh, genre savviness. We know it didn't get blown up. Yeah. Um. Looks like they've buried it in rocks. There's kind of no excuse for them to fuck up this badly and to not like they're there. There's no defense. Just fucking put the explosives on the ship and blow it up. Like why would you do this weird thing of blowing up the area around the ship instead of just the ship? It's I don't know why they're doing that but we it's, all know that's what's going to happen it's it's just one of those things like how i mean i know it's made of like the special wood but it's how adam wood but that's not how, that good that just means it's self-repairing like how clearly does it need to be exploded for people to think aha it's been destroyed and yet it's yeah. fine or you know, it's gonna be fine like, uh, okay guys all right <laughs> like uh, why didn't i don't know oda could have just said like we searched for their ship, but we couldn't find it. Like, that's, you know, that's not that's not the end of the world. Could have done that. Why is it that they know that the Straw Hats are even I here? have no idea how they know where this fucking ship is either. I have no idea. Maybe they just have been searching for, you know, days no, or but weeks like, or something. It's, but why did they, d when did they learn that the Straw Hats specifically were here? Because they wouldn't be looking well, for I mean, a ship. I mean, they know that Luffy was, um, was, was here, so theoretically... Not crazy to think that Luffy's ship would be here somewhere, and they, they, I think they know where he showed up originally, because like he ran into some of the troops there and fought him. Uh, if I remember oh, correctly. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, Orochi, <laughs> One is, of these things. Orochi is uh, s uh, crossing off areas on the map that mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. things to destroy. So indeed, basically he goes around bombing, blowing up the great bridges of all the districts. Uh, so mm -hmm. that none of the mm -hmm. people, and, oh, and also Port Itachi, where the boats were ready to go, they're being exploded in this in this panel here. I don't it's see pretty, any of the I mean, this people. Is... Like I don't see Frankie. I mm -hmm. don't see anyone. Well, he says like I haven't seen a single samurai yet, but 
I'm going to blow up the bridges because, you know, Luffy's here and rumors have been circulating and we've gotten, you know, some word that plans are being amassed. So even, even if I can't locate them, what I can do is blow up their routes of getting to the place. Because, uh, by the way, you'd think, I always, th whenever anybody blows up a bridge, I always think to myself, just swim across. Just, why, why can't you just swim across? But I'm, I'm looking at the rivers. They look pretty fast. They're drawn in a pretty tumultuous looking way. I'm just going to assume that you can't cross them uh, by swimming. It's, <laughs> I'll, I'll do you that yeah. courtesy, Oda. Like, um, they're probably a lot bigger bridges than they look. Yeah, they're, they're pretty big. They're pretty like, big, big enough to, to support an army with wagons crossing it all at once. And it's mm -hmm. all gone. Mm -hmm. So, like, to cross the river would take time and uh, sure. may not even be possible sure. for the weapons, which is really the, the, the issue here. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Um... So, I mean, it's never going to be a permanent solution, but because you could always build a bridge over time. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely fucked them up. They can't get to the location in time. Yep, which is, yeah, he's just trying to foil the plan. So that that's fair. This is a, this is a fine plan by Orochi. No, no complaints. No complaints. Although they're like, not one person could get there. I mean, a couple people could cross the river, right? I mean, it's possible a couple people show up. Is it so impossible to get across this river without a bridge? It is uh, kind of... How'd you make it in the first place, back in the day, if it's so impossible? <laughs> uh, it is kind of a weird thing, because in One Piece, uh, characters even as early as East Blue um, yeah. were, like, strong enough to, like, leap fast distances and, uh, like, superhuman oh, strength for, for a, for, for a real-life uh, parallel. You know, Usopp was supposed yeah. to be a weakling, but he was actually really quite strong from the beginning. Indeed, indeed. Um, I, I feel like in the new world in Wano, there would be a few guys who are, like, strong enough to make a, a sprint jump, long jump over the bridge remnants. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, I mean, this is a pedantic point. I, I don't think Orochi's plan would theoretically stop everyone from showing up. I think that's a bit of an exaggeration. But this plan is pretty solid to majorly fuck up the rebels' attempts to mount a, a revolution. So on that front, okay, it's fine. I'm just being yeah. my little nitpicky self, as I, as I like to do. Yeah. It's always a thing with the shonens. Like, if people can jump as tall as a tree, tall as a house, yeah. why is any environmental... <laughs> problem even exist mm -hmm. <laughs> true true uh but anyway yes he's crossing off all the things he's saying yes you a -A -A, you asshole mm -hmm. you made all my troops laugh at me but i'll be the one laughing because i've stopped the the assassination attempt i've stopped the rebellion and you see I, you know I, I appreciate this this is my favorite moment of orochi yet where he's like i mean he's a silly looking guy you know, he knows his troops find his, like, fear of the Kozuki clan and whatnot, like, kind of pathetic because he believes in superstitious stuff, according to them, or whatnot. But, like, in this moment, he's like, he's like, even though everyone doubts me, like, I'm still able to thwart these plans no matter what. So I, I'm just going to, I'm going to use the tools I do have to make sure that nothing could happen and nothing could even attempt to fuck with my, my plans and whatnot. So, I, I don't know, I just, this is good. This is a good moment. I like it. Yeah. The thing is, mm -hmm. he doesn't know about Udon, I assume. Oh, mm. yeah, he doesn't know about it. Like, Udon, they, they, they called him and said, oh, no, everything's fine. And it's like, yes, hmm, I guess I guess that one was a, was a false alarm. So he thinks Udon mm. is fine. He didn't send anything to blow up Udon. And Udon is right next to Port Tokage. Oh, Udon why... is literally on the port. Yeah, huh. so, like, why is the prison hmm. people not at the location? What happened? Um... <laughs> do you think, okay, do you think it's going to be some shit that's l literally like, like when we, we flash back to like the boys, that the, they're like, oh, nobody showed up. And they're literally going to be like next panel is like, oops, sorry, we're late. Uh, we had, we had a feast, like we were eating, but we're, we're here. Sorry about that. Uh, we're ready to go. Here we go. <laughs> Cause I really do suspect something like that is going to happen with like all these forces. But you're right. It doesn't make any sense. Like uh, Oda, you really should have constructed this map maybe a little more carefully, because it doesn't make sense why the prisoners wouldn't be there. They were totally unknown, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a They could have definitely been there on silly. time. So, like, I don't know. But you know what? If, if Oda's literally setting up for a joke for that, that is an acceptable explanation for me. Um, but we don't know that yet, so I guess we'll have to, I guess we'll have to see. 
Mm. I'll, I'm going to let Oda slide for a little bit. I want to hear his explanation for when, inevitably, the good guys do, in fact, show up in some way. At that point, I will be able to judge whether or not that was total bullshit or if there's, you know, something redeemable about it. I mean, I think that's... But your point is well taken. That's definitely the obvious, like, silver lining is that the prisoners mm -hmm. and, and all the weapons from there are okay. Right. The thing is, even if they do arrive, they don't have the boats. The boats never made it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, True. So, I don't know what they're going to do. It's, I mean, we. it looks like we straight up see all the boats get exploded, so I don't really know how they're going to get around that one. Unless, man, oh, remember, remember in Whole Cake at the end, when, like, there was that one panel where, like, quote-unquote, the sunny got blown up, and we were all like, oh, no, the sunny got blown up, and there's no possible way this is, like, a shitty misdirection where, like, the smoke that was there from the explosion made it, like, kind of hard to see that the ship was actually 100% fine. And, like, everyone, what everyone knew was going to happen is, in fact, what happened. Didn't... Is that... What, are we what? just getting... Is it another one of these? That's got to be it, right? What other explanation could there be? Uh, the The, the boats that they were going to use are all... Well, some of them are fine. You know... It's, okay, it's, okay, all right, here's, here's one thing yeah, go ahead, about go ahead. that. That, okay. that panel, that one panel of the, all the boats in Port Itachi, which is where they were building them. Mm -hmm. um, in that, it looks like one ship is blo ex exploding well, in that shot, it looks like to I me. I mean, whatever. There's, there's a number of ships blown okay. up. I don't see a single person there getting hurt. I don't yeah. see... I know Frankie and, and Usopp mm. left to go to see to meet everyone at the Sunny Go. Um, mm -hmm. So they wouldn't be there, but all of the other people were would be there to get the ships on the water, you know, like, to sail them to the, to the right location. Mm -hmm. Either they were all on those ships and were killed, or hmm. they are for some reason absent. And Here's the the reason they could be absent is yeah. because they left some of the ships there and moved some of the ships themselves secretly a little earlier. I don't maybe know. Maybe even, maybe it's, it might even be possible, considering how prolific Usopp and, uh, and Frankie can be when they're working on stuff like this. Maybe they, in fact, did move the ships away from here to a, perhaps a more private location or, you know, part of the way there so they wouldn't be found or something. Um, or maybe out to sea somewhat or something. But they, maybe they literally left, like, some things to look like their ships are still there. But why would you leave any? I mean, did they expect to be discovered here? So they left, like, a, yeah, that's the one some thing. stuff like, so it would look like? They, it's nobody little... had any idea that their plan had been, you know, seen and expected. Yeah. So it's, it's all hmm. a big, hmm, it's all a big, hmm. Big thinking emoji going on over here right now. Uh, I get. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see what Otis says, I guess, and and I will judge harshly if necessary. But uh, <laughs> but we'll see. Point is, looks like uh, our boy Orochi did his best to fuck I up mean, the plans he, he so that nobody his, shows up. His plan was to make them feel like they'd have been abandoned and they will have no opportunity, mm. and that's exactly what they feel. They are standing right, there right. in the big storm with a tiny dinghy, and they're all mm. going to get in the dinghy and try and make it over to Onigashima. And Mono Mon Monosuke is like, no, it's suicide. You, you we, we can try later. And this is like, no. But can you, though? Can you, you Momo, there's, there's no, There's no other opportunity. They'll find out mm -hmm. that the prison was compromised, and then they'll kill all of our soldiers, all of the people, all the rebels. There's no other opportunity. This is the one chance we had. And, you know, in Curry, they they covered for us. They said they stole the food, and their town was burned to the ground. With my waifu in it. My waifu my for real. My fucking wife. Oof. So That's it's like, big Roblox oof. So it's like a... It's it's like... It's do or die. Literally. Yep. And they're, they're just like, okay, we've got like basically zero odds. Fuck it. Uh, we're gonna do it anyway. And you know what? I This this is cool. They're, and they're just like... Uh, Momonosuke says, what, like, what do I do? Uh, what, what the fuck do I do? And they're just like, survive. Go live with Hiori. Go live with your sister. Do whatever you gotta do. Oh, this is a good moment. Kinemon's like, your father was alone at first, too. And so you can you can rebuild. You can have another chance one day. But the samurai, they I, wouldn't have been samurai if it wasn't for Odin. They were just a bunch of fuckboys. So they have to carry out their duty to Odin. They have to launch this attack no matter what it costs. Ooh, and, I, and you know, I was suspecting that this pose 
is a Seven Samurai reference. I wanted to go watch the movie before, because I haven't seen it before, before commenting, but uh, maybe next time I'll report back if I'm able to find this uh, in Seven Samurai. I know, I know it, <laughs> if people were making fun of me, lol, every time Samurai are on screen, it's a Seven Samurai reference. No, but this <laughs> one could be. There's similarities, goddammit. Oda one, chose two, Seven three, Samurai four, five, here six, for a seven. reason. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a See? number of seven. That's a number. That's a real number. <laughs> so there you go. Case proven. Um, all right. Anyway, this is real cool. I, I mean, like one of them boys. is a ninja. They're, uh, they're good. Uh, actually, not true, because we can see Shinobu off to the side holding Momonosuke. No, no, no. The other seven Raizo. are, in fact, all samurai. Raizo well, is, see is, Momonosuke? is a ninja. Wait, sorry, who? Raizo. You forget Big Fit? God damn it, Raizo is a fucking ninja. Raizo doesn't count, because he's one of the seven scabbards, or one of the nine red scabbards. That makes you a samurai, as far as I'm concerned, so he counts. <laughs> uh, Kawamatsu a is a sumo wrestler. Ka- Kawamatsu is clearly stated to be a samurai. That has been stated before, even if he fights with weird art. Doesn't matter. Uh, Inoue Rashi's a dog. Two. He's just a pet. He has a sword. That, that counts. That counts. Uh, Shura Doji's uh, fat. What? Yeah, he doesn't count. Kiku Nojo's a girl in spirit, so in girl women in spirit. suck, so doesn't count. So he's an Love idiot after, in by the way. He's a loser in spirit. Do you think... I, I'm just throwing this out there. Total crazy thing. Do you think that Oda's planning some trickery, some some misdirect of, like, that's not actually Kiku in that armor there, and it's actually somebody else, since we haven't seen her, his face, whatever? You know, um, they. I don't think they've said a word mm-hmm. since we've seen them like that, but I don't know why no, they, have not. they would be someone else and who they would be. Here's a crazy theory. Crazy theory. It's like Drake or it's like Law, and they're doing some either plan to fuck up this operation... Or and Kiku's been like captured somewhere, or some something else. Um, I don't know. Well, the thing with that is that Kiku was a big bitch, so like they would need to be the same yeah. build. I don't think Law is hmm. that tall. I don't think Drake is that tall either. You know that? I think I think you're right. I think you're right. Mm, okay, I'm just saying I'm open to the possibility of some surprise coming from inside that armor. So okay, well we we will see. That'd will be see. interesting. Okay, it would. Last thing, they're they're sort of th- they're remembering like. Uh, mm-hmm. Odin and stuff. Uh, as Lord Odin's samurai until the bitter end. This is this is it. This is thirty nine years ago in the flower capital. Um, he's talking about we must open Wano's borders. I think mm-hmm. that's him, the o- Odin speaking. And then oh, wait, let, let me just read this out because this is important. It's uh, Odin says in this flashback. Listen up, everyone. There was a reason why this country has been isolated for hundreds of years, and that reason is deeply connected to the Kozuki clan. In time, its purpose will be fulfilled. In order for the tides of this world to turn, we must open Wano's borders. Okay, let me just say, this is huge news. I had, I don't think I'd thought of this before. I don't think this has been addressed before. But basically, what's basically 100% clear by this statement is that Odin's long-term like personal narrative that we've been kind of experiencing through flashbacks and whatnot of wanting to open Wano's borders and his whole character being like, ah, this country's too cramped and whatnot. Now that he has said this, and he's saying there's a reason for it, this almost 100% guarantees that Wano's closed borders policy has something to do with the Poneglyphs, the Void Century, the ancient kingdom that was destroyed, that, you know, the Kozuki clan made the Poneglyphs for, and that opening of the borders in some way directly ties into some way that, like, this could change the world. So, so just boom, just like that, with a couple panels just now, we've now tied Kozuki Odin's fucking long-term narrative that obviously relates to Momonosuke and all these other characters, our boys who are caught up in this big war against Kaido, the Yonko, and, you know, uh, 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 Orochi and all this stuff, it's now intrinsically linked to the larger One Piece narrative of the world government, of the Void Century, of the Poneglyphs and the ancient weapons and Whitebeard and Gold Roger and all that stuff. And uh, uh, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautifully done. I can't believe I hadn't thought of this before, but uh, I, mean, I cannot absolutely I had, fucking wait to see where this goes. I had a suspicion that the fact that the Poneglyphs mm-hmm. came from Wano means that they have something very important to do with the, the Void Century. Um, we, we all suspected that to a degree. But I, I, gu- I guess I wasn't thinking like, the opening of the borders is what would 
Like, I don't even know really what it would mean specifically. It, see, th th that's the thing. This could be either really good or really shitty writing. And, you know, I like Oda, so I, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt because he's written really good things before. But so, so based now that he said this, Oda now needs to make the opening of the borders, which will obviously inevitably, inevitably be the end of this arc. That's everything's been set up to do that. So that's going to be the end of this arc. And he now needs to make that event in some, ha in some way relate to, like, the secret of the Poneglyphs and, like, maybe uh, Laugh Tale, Raft Tale or whatever, and the world government and all that stuff. So, so now, o Oda, you put yourself on the hook in a big way now. Now, specifically, the opening of the borders has to be related in some way. So I'm going to be holding your feet to the fire, buddy. So you better, you better deliver. Oh, by, by the way, small point, I just want to point out that uh, one little thing, those Tory gates, I'm looking at um, the, uh, the, the Sakura tree that yeah. Odin Castle or whatever is on top of, or Kozugi Castle, or whatever the fuck it's called, in the middle of the flower capital, those gates represent an approach to holy sites or to a place where yokai live and whatnot, and I just think they look real cool, and it means it's, it's like a holy place, the palace. Isn't that neato? Uh, okay, anyway. <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking, like, how far away those bridges mm -hmm. that lead into the castle are, and how, like, unbelievably steep it must be at the very bottom. Mm, like, it's basically, it's like, the, like, the height of a house <laughs> is, like, cons like a 90-degree angle, straight up. That, that's true. It's, like, the size of, like, a mansion height or something. You gotta climb up again there. At least, like, one or two stories there. Oof, that's a that's a big walk. They, they, that's they a big probably walk. got like those climbing rock things in the in the wall. Also, inside. imagine you're trying to climb that bridge, but like the very point where the bridge touches the ground is almost like a, a straight ninety degree angle upward that you start yeah. walking at as that, you climb that fucking bridge. They have to have like ropes or something to pull yourself up or something. I don't know. Shitty world design, Oda. <laughs> Fuck you. Japan sucks. Period. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Let's let's wrap this sucker up. Yeah. Thirty nine years ago, flower capital. What's up? Yeah. So hide your kids, hide your wife. Here comes <laughs> they raping everybody hide, in here. Hide the livestock. I don't know what he's gonna do with that. He's Hur gonna rape the livestock. Watch out. <laughs> Hurry up. Here he comes. The mo the, the super charismatic flat man in the flower ca capital. Infamous Koziki Odin mm -hmm. has returned. He's strutting his stuff, walking down the middle of the street with a gigantic rope thing on his back. What do they call that? Yeah, I don't remember. It's a sumo thing. I forget yeah. what it's called. He's got his big, like, me like thick, meaty legs. Just he has just the thickest legs uh, in the game, and his skirt is so short. I'm seeing so much leg going on right now. Everybody's yeah. pissed off to see this guy. I, I hope <laughs> he looks. I hope he looks exactly like Frankie. Uh, you know? Okay. So uh, this is this is this is it, guys. Uh, we might be in for the Kozuki flashback we've all been waiting for, like next chapter. I don't know. It seems like that's where we're going. Oh, of course. Jesus Christ. I, 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 good God. Good God. Well, well we, we will see. And we see he's got his two swords, Enma and whatever the other fucking one was. Benma. Um, and by the way, it, it says, like, uh, he has failed to set sail again. So clearly, he was attempting to escape the country, but something or someone stopped him. So I'm, I'm interested to see Hurry what that's about. Because his father already. is the shogun. So yeah. Yeah, people, everyone wants people, him to die. <laughs> They're none too pleased. People do not like this man. But he's so no, he's such no a chad sad. that he nothing can like water off a duck duck's back. I mean, he's straight up doing a chad stride uh, down the center of yeah. town here and, uh, and flaunting his his insane gains. This man does not skip leg day, and he's letting everybody know. And he's looking he's looking incredible. I, I just want to say, so everything we uh, my my problem with law guys like law to a degree, do flamingo stuff like this, uh, or or even Gene Bay a little bit is we're like. We're, we're told so many cool things about these characters, but there's no punchline. There's no punchline at the end that's like, how funny. There's, a, there's like little ones here and there with like, you know, Law, they made fun of him a little bit. But Kozuki Odin, everything we've heard has been like so fucking insanely glowing. You know, I've been complaining about it a little bit. Like, Jesus, everybody wants to suck this guy's fucking dick. He's like tied to like the world government and the deepest lore of One Piece. Fucking Roger and Whitebeard literally fought over him, uh, uh, over one of them sweet gams. Um, and so it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, uh, Odie, you better be, do something good with this. Just the, just the simple act of making him look kind of silly. Just, just like, a, like he's got a way big bow that's way too big. He's, he's showing off so much leg. He's literally doing the Chad stride. He's got Chad hairstyle. He's got a weird spike or a weird hat or something. I cannot fucking wait to see what this guy looks like. I'm, I'm just saying, 
If Oda keeps going, stays the course, and makes this guy a funny boy, just like I did with Katakuri back in the day, you build him up, you make him look like such a badass, but then you give him a comedic edge, you know? You take the edge off. You make him, like, relatable and silly and not too serious a character. I feel like with this little flash of this character, I feel like this is where we are going. And god damn, I hope he delivers and makes this boy a funny boy, a good boy, an exciting boy. I'm yeah. incredibly stoked to see what he does. And uh, I mean, it's looking good. It's looking very the, good. The, the mere fact that his nine red scabbards were like mm-hmm. a bunch of misfit, like ne'er-do-well, yes. uh, yes. you know, <laughs> ruffians. Uh, like criminals, cl- cl- based, some yeah, of them cr- anyway. Yeah, criminals, like clearly means that this guy is going to be a bit of rough a bit a bit of a rowdy fucker himself uh, very true very true <laughs> and is and is like fuck authority like i hate my dad sort of like this is all <laughs> this is all like turning into like a really cool like i'm i'm very excited for next for next chapter oh i'm so fucking stoked dude i can i i want to see his face i want to i want to see his full design god damn it i've been waiting for this for so long when did when did we first learn about um, like Momonosuke having a famous dad or something? probably in in Punk in Hazard Zo? sometime right? Oh, maybe in Punk Hazard. I, I think in Punk Hazard probably because that's when we met Momonosuke. Punk Hazard was like chapter like six hundred, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little bit after that. So we've been waiting like five years to meet this character, or so, may, maybe even more. I think it's probably more. Uh, goddamn. Uh, good luck, Oda. I'm 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 feeling very positive, and I I can't wait for next chapter. And, and it doesn't say no chapter next week, so I'm expecting a new one next week, Oda. Don't fail me, boy. Or I'm I'll come to your house, and I'll Chad stride up to you and I'll come slap to your house with my thick thighs. I'll come to your house and I'll play Smash Brothers, and I'll beat you at Smash Brothers. Is what I'll do. <laughs> Just like Toby Fox did to Sakurai. It'll be that kind of relationship. Sakurai oh, and Oda man. are different people. <laughs> What if Luffy got into Smash Brothers? Wouldn't I would, that just be you know, so silly. I would really like a One Piece character. It's to not get impossible. Into Smash. I mean, you know, not 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 because silly boys not because I think it it is a good idea, but because it would be mm-hmm. really funny to fuck over everyone who wants Goku to be in. <laughs> oh, I I I mean, I think Goku is a worse choice than Luffy. But I mean, he is more iconic in the grand scheme of things. I'd you say you should just put buggy. Even that's put arguable. Buggy in there. Put buggy. Not, not just Luffy. fuck it. Put buggy in there, man. <laughs> just do it. It's like um, you know when when they were trying to decide characters for uh, for the Dissidia Final Fantasy fighting game. Like at at a certain point, it's like all the main characters, but then they get up to like the later new numbers that like nobody knew. And like for Final Fantasy XI, there's like kind of no real main character. They were just like, um, I don't know, put like this one, she's like a literally like two foot tall midget, like sorcerer who rhymes with everything she says, like Gruntilda from Banjo-Kazooie, and she's just like an annoying asshole sorcerer lady, but she's like a good, like they just had to pick somebody, so they just picked like a, a character that the developers liked, so do the same with Buggy, just put Buggy in there, he'd be a great choice, um, but I, uh, on a serious note, don't put anime in Smash Brothers. It's it's not right. It's it's immoral and indecent, and it would make me cry. I don't care how many video games Goku and Luffy and fucking Naruto and anyone else has been in. Smash Brothers is for video games. Keep these worlds separate, or I'll I'll cry. That's my there you all go. Right. There's my opinion. And that's things. the end of the okay. Chapter. Anyway, we're done, people. We're done. That's all we have to say. Chapter nine fifty nine. Uh, uh, welcome to the. Golden Generation. Goddamn. I guess we'll see you next week, but before that, head on over to patreon.com slash thepodcastpirates and uh, give us your money. Join the crew for as little as one dollar we do and uh, give us as much as you want. I won't stop you. Um, And uh, (laughs) join, regardless, join the podcast Discord down below. Talk about One Piece all the time and help me, help give me information to say on the show, as was done by the geniuses in the chat today. Uh, I think I think Figerson, I believe, is the one I want to credit with that. He's the one who turned me on. So thanks, yep. Fig. Uh, the original dad from the Radcon 3 Kickstarter. He's, he's a good man. He's a good man. Um, oh, and I have, I have another little announcement, possibly a new announcement for you as well, Gib. And it's that um, you should head on over to twitter.com slash podcast ahoy. For our new Twitter account that I just made at long last to be just about potty cast stuff. No more PCP Twitter leeching. Fuck those guys. They can eat a dick. Um, 
at Podcast Ahoy. I tried doing Podcast Pirates. Already taken. I tried the Podcast Pirates. Too many letters. So Podcast Ahoy. That's what you get. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. So go follow us. It'll be One Piece news from there, from now on, and that'll be it. All oh, right. Yes. That's send it, everybody. fan art to that Twitter. That's where we will. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes, yes, 100%. Send fan art of us. Help us kick off the new. Uh, whatever the fuck it uh, the new twitter with some fan art of us we would love that we'll retweet it and you can reap the benefit of our incredibly high social currency so we both win from this relationship all right have a good night everybody have a good week we'll see you next week kozuki odin wano boys act three let's do it let's fuck them up lads see you soon bye, bye.